ferocious marketers and executives and business owners, I'm excited to be kicking off day two of Digital Summit. But I need a little, I need a little energy here, you know what I'm saying? All right, so my name's Johnny Hughes, and today I get to teach you all how to boost website conversions in just 30 minutes. Now, I know there's a lot of great sessions going on, but the truth is, you're here, and that means the absolute world to me. So I'm gonna do everything I can to pack as much value as I can possibly do in the next half an hour. Does that sound fair? Yes, it does. So first off, I wanna talk about digital marketing. Digital marketing. So how many digital marketers in the room? Quite a few. So can we can all agree that we have a growing list of responsibilities and that there's a wide array of metrics and KPIs that we find ourselves responsible for within our organizations. Is that fair? Right, so that's everything from clicks, likes, shares, impressions, views, and the list literally goes on and on and on, okay? And while all of these are important, truth be told, I'm not gonna talk about any of these today. No, we're getting laser focused on what I believe to be the king metric of them all. Bum, 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 conversions, yes. Conversions. See, I practice conversion marketing. So that's the methodology of how do we increase the percentage of people who come to our website that actually convert into a lead or a customer, okay? So while all those vanity metrics are important, at the end of the day, us marketers, we're responsible for driving measurable results, right? And that is in the form of a conversion. Now every business has a different need with their conversions, okay? Some might be trying to get them to schedule a tour, right, or book a demo of our SaaS product, right, or request a consultation, purchase a ticket to a conference like this, or, or a product online, right? So the conversions, though, that's the heart and soul of what we're trying to inspire our users to do when they arrive on our website, okay? So we have a framework that we use that's going to help you boost the overall conversion rates to your site, okay? So let's unpack. So first and foremost, when I talk about a framework, this is something that we've been building and we've been optimizing for the last 15 years, okay? So it's a psychological framework that studies user behavior. Meaning, okay, what are the patterns and the trends that's gonna take a group of anonymous visitors to come on our website and build this imaginary bridge that's gonna convince them to give us their contact information or their credit card information, okay? Like what do they have in common? What are the traits, characteristics? Regardless of the market, regardless of the industry. So what we've done is we've developed a six point framework that's proven to help boost those conversions no matter what that industry is, okay? And so this framework, what it's doing, it's generating over 10,000 conversions per month for our clients using this system. And in fact, this little guy over here, this is our conversion counter. So this is a live feed that tracks the exact number of conversions that we generate for our clients in the last 18 months. So 307,599, okay? I say that not to brag about the numbers, because these numbers represent people to us. So as a marketer, it's our job is to advocate for the people on the other end of the screen that's actually engaging in our work, right? So we have a moment to actually help them solve a specific problem and connect to a brand that can truly help them overcome the challenge that they're having currently, right? So what we're gonna be talking about is a framework, and I'm gonna be uh, walking you through this, and it's something that I believe that you can take back to your clients and ultimately help you grow your business. So first and foremost though, we need to take a real honest assessment of ourselves. We're gonna talk about our website, our website. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine your website in your mind right now, okay? Picture it in its current form as it stands uh, right this very side. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna rate this on a scale of zero to 10. Zero being the absolute worst website in our industry, and we all know it. And then there's the tens, right? The absolute best website in our industry. But we're gonna find a number, okay? And it's a subjective number, right? It's based on what you believe. It could be based on the quality of the design, how well it ranks, how well it converts, how mobile friendly it is, how accessible it is, whatever the case may be, I want you to find a number in your mind on how you would rate your website as it stands currently. Everybody have a number? Okay, so do me a favor and raise your hand if you would rate your website between a zero and a two. Any brave souls out here? Zeros and twos. 
None. Okay, cool. What about nines and tens? Any nines and tens in the room? None. Okay. How about the five, six, sevens? Anybody would rate five, six, seven? Okay. Majority of us. Fair. Well, the truth is, most companies have settled for an average website, just like we just saw. Okay. The reality is, we have a website. I mean, it's on par with our competition. It's not better. It's not worse. But you know, it's something that we have. Right? We redesign it every five to ten years. Well, it won't win any major design awards. It gets the job done, right? Does that sound about right? <laughs> Wrong. You see, average won't cut it. It won't. Your customers are online in a tornado of distractions and noise, fighting for the most valuable currency in the world, which is their attention. Okay? And in this brutally competitive online marketplace, average won't cut it. It won't. It won't. Average will not allow you to create a dominant position on Google and own all of those keywords. Average will not create a sense of pride for you or your employees to boldly stand up and want to showcase where they work and represent your brand. Average will not compel a prospective customer to jump out of their chair and want to do business with you. And it sure as heck won't attract any new employees who want to come work for your brand. We're all brainwashed to think average is somehow okay because that's what the person to my left and my right believe in, right? But it's not. You deserve better. For those of you in the room that hear me and that need to hear this message, I want you to listen. Because you didn't start that business, right? You didn't join that company. You didn't pursue this career to be average. No, you deserve stronger and better. And imagine what that version of yourself would look like if we invested that time and the energy to be the apex variations of who we are in our market, right? The ones that all of our competitors look up to. The ones that really bring pride and inspiration to our team and represent who we are, okay? So I want you to all think about what that could be because that's our job, is to really make sure that we can harness that power. And I know what you're saying. You're like, all right, Johnny, that's cool and all, but it's just a website, right? Well, true, but that website, that's your number one marketing asset, okay? This thing works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it creates global visibility. What other tool or channel can you literally get any eyeball in the world to look at your company? Oh, and you can control exactly what it says, what you show them, and what feelings you can actually inspire them through, right? So this is your best employee, right? It doesn't take breaks, it doesn't take vacation, it's the best salesperson, it's the best recruiter, and it does exactly what it's told, right? Time and time again. So we have to think about how do we equip our website to actually function like this, to actually be our number one marketing asset. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So these are the three things that we're going to unpack. One is how to actually upgrade your website using a proven wireframe. Then I'm going to show you actually how to convert your site into a conversion funnel. And then I'll invite you to take the website droplet <coughs> challenge. Sound good? Yes. yes. We all win. We're winning. Yes. All right. Cool. Wireframes. Cool. Wireframes. <laughs> so wireframes, what they are is it's a structural framework that helps us really harness the kind of information and message that we want to present on our site, right? That's not influenced by graphics and fonts and all the pretty stuff. It's really making sure we can get to the heart and soul of what we need to say and communicate on our site. So when we're talking about reimagining the Apex version of our sites, we want to think about that from a wireframe perspective. But first and foremost, we have to know what is our primary conversion objective, meaning how does our website make us money? Mm -hmm. Is it through lead generation? Are you trying to generate leads? Are you trying to generate more online sales? Are you trying to create brand awareness? Get, put traffic in the door to your local business, right? We have to know what our primary objective is that we're trying to convert our users to take, and that's North Star, right? So for those of you taking notes, I want you to draw a big star on the top of your paper, and I want you to write down what is your primary conversion objective. When it's all said and done, what do we need our users to do on our site? Okay, so that's North Star. So now we have all these visitors, right? This pool of visitors that come to our site. So how do we get them to do that? Well, it starts with building trust. Trust, okay? 
You see, people are on guard now more than ever. We're biologically wired to avoid danger at all costs, and especially online, okay? So think about anyone who arrives on your website, they're already skeptical, okay? So we have to take some time to make them feel comfortable and at ease and disarm them so that they can be receptive to the messaging that we're trying to communicate. So how do we do that? Well, first off, you have to know the average person spends seven hours on the internet per day. Seven hours, okay? Think about the amount of information and content that our brains are processing every single day. And what that's done, it's actually reduced the attention span to just three seconds when visiting a new website. Three seconds. So we officially have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. It's true. Now, some people might say seven seconds, some might say five seconds. Guys, I'm telling you, it's three. I study this, this is, this is where I live. It's three seconds. So how do we take advantage of that three seconds? Well, first off, we have to be very clear in our messaging. Clarity is everything. Make it very easy for me to understand what you're trying to say. Next, we have to reduce cognitive load meaning the amount of things my brain has to process, all the options and tasks that you're trying to get me to take, reduce that as minimal as possible to create an easy and a seamless tunnel for me to work through. And next we need everything to load super fast, right? Speed is everything, right? And that's actually why we host all of our websites on Pantheon. Because if we know that our sites can load twice as fast as our competition, well, that's a huge leg up. When we're talking about three seconds, those milliseconds matter. That time is everything. And lastly, we want to we want to encourage people to not make me think. Right? I shouldn't have to think how to use your website. It should be seamless. It should be intuitive, and allow me to really digest the information that you're communicating. But trust, right? Trust is the name of the game that we're trying to establish with our audience, because if people like you, they'll listen to you. But if they trust you, they'll do business with you. So. Here's how we build trust through our website, okay? So these are the six point regions that I was talking about in our framework. What we've identified are the most critical things that we need to position to help build trust and connectivity with our audience, to help inspire them to convert. This is a framework, okay? This is intended to be adapted and modified to your business. These six regions do not all, they're not all necessary all the time, and they don't always have to go in this order. But these are the patterns that I said, based on the user behavior, that we found resonates well with building trust. So let me unpack each of these regions real quick. So we're gonna start with the hero. So when I first arrive on a website, before I scroll or before I do anything, I met with the hero. This is by far the most important region on any website. 70% of all decision making happens here. Am I going to scroll and learn more, or am I going to leave? That, that decision-making happens here, 70% of that. It's literally the, the breadwinner, it wears the cape of the website, that's why it's the hero. So what is the most important thing that we need to do and communicate within that hero? I need to know what you do, how you make my life better, I want to be able to visualize success, and I want to know what I need to do to act. Okay, that's the recipe and the structure of a well-designed hero. And if there's any section on your website that you need to invest the time to really think through, this is the one. But next, let's talk about benefits, okay? So how does this product or service actually make my life better? How does this improve my standings? And what do I have to gain from this? But this is communicated from the point of view of our user, okay? Not from our business. Because these are benefits, these aren't features. And if you think about like a car, you might even talk about the features, right? You got four wheel drive, you got anti lock brakes. But the benefit to me is that I can safely drive across the country with my family. That's the benefit to me, not the feature of your product. So think about how we can communicate the benefit of that user for how they can work with you and how you can help them solve their problem. Next is the risk of indecision. What if I never act to solve this problem? What if I have to live with this forever? Right? What am I in the fear of missing out of if I don't actually solve this problem? But this actually helps us connect deeper and emotionally with them to know that there's more at stake than just this one step in the process. And then we have social proof, right? Do you have the authority to actually help me solve my problem? Who else have you helped? What else have you done? 
And this is shared from someone else's perspective, okay? So I want someone else to vouch for you, to tell me that you actually have the authority to help me, okay? Reviews, testimonials, awards, things like that that can help really build trust with our audience. And then use your empathy. You see, our business exists to help a very specific customer base solve a very specific problem. We understand you. We feel that pain, we lived it. In fact, we started this company because we believe that there's a better way, okay? And we need to show them that we can relate to them and that we care, because we do. And when we can do that, and when we can unlock all these different chambers, then we can actually present them an action plan, right? What are the three to five steps needed for them to help solve this problem? And it's not just right now. Don't, don't just talk about clicking this button or subscribe to this email. No, what is the step of the process that I can expect of working with you? Three to five steps, right? You're gonna fill out this application. You're gonna meet one-on-one -on -one with an advisor. And then he's gonna craft a custom plan on exactly how to help you reach your goals and objectives in the form of a proposal, right? I know what to expect in the sequence of events that's gonna happen when I take my action. So again, these are the key regions of what we've identified as of a proven wireframe, okay? So now I'm gonna actually break down the anatomy of an example of a wireframe using these principles. Okay, so I know this might be a little hard to read in the back, so I'll narrate for you. Um, but So this is a Sen gem, it's a fictitious rock climbing gem, okay? So this is a wireframe. Um, and when we design and we build our wireframes, we typically are designing for two different eye flows, which is the Z pattern and the F pattern. I'll explain a little bit more of that in a sec. But what that means is the first place that our eyes go is the top left of the website, <coughs> right? Which is typically where your logo is presented. And then we read it in North America from left to right, so instantly we scan across the very top bar. Um, and that top bar is a prime time for positioning your primary call to action, okay? And that primary call to action has to have an action verb. Right? This is not click here, this is not learn more. No, this says sign up for a class. Okay? Who knows what's gonna happen when they click that button? Anybody? Yell it out. Yep. Sign up for class. Right? I didn't have to think about it. I already knew. I knew what's gonna happen. So many times there's mystery behind our CTA. Like, what does that mean? What is actually what is gonna happen when I click that? Right? So we want to make it very clear on what we want them to do. Now we want to be able to present our heading, right? clearly state what we do. So it's rock climbing for beginners. We know exactly what it is. We know exactly who it's for. And then we can visualize that. We support that heading with a visualization, right? Typically media of some sort. But we might show a photo of a woman, you know, doing an easy rock climbing ball, right? I can see myself doing that. I can relate to that. I want that experience for myself. And now I'm gonna reinforce that with the with same call to action. Sign up for a class. Again, this helps frame the key anatomy of that hero region. Now I can present the benefits, right? So have fun safely, join a community, push yourself. These are benefits to me of doing something outside of the box, right? Being a part of something bigger than myself. Next, I can help show what a future state might look like, right? So we could show a photo of somebody doing more advanced, oh, advanced wall or something. So I see there's, there's opportunity to grow. There's advancement beyond where I am today. And then the risks, right? What's the risk of indecision? What if I never act? Life's too short to not reach towards your potential. What if I never acted? What if I really never pushed myself? Would I be reaching my life's potential? See, we're connecting to them deeper and emotionally to start asking those questions on why they should become part of this community. And then again, we're reinforcing that call to action. So you might be saying, Johnny, gosh, how many times are we gonna put that same call to action in? The truth is, we don't know where they are in their journey when it's all gonna click, right? When it really, the aha moment where it's like, yeah, that's me, you got it. I gotta, I gotta take this step, the tipping point. So we always have to make sure that our call to action is there to help reinforce that moment. And then finally, the action plan, right? So this would be sign up for your free class, meet one-on-one -on -one with the instructor, and see what a, you know, a monthly program could look for you, right? So this is kind of a breakdown of a, an example wireframe using those six regions. So here's some live website examples to some of our clients. Um, this is Spider Mower USA. It's a really cool commercial lawnmower that you can control remotely, okay? 
Um, so again, at the top right, we have our primary call to action, which is request a demo. Our heading is the most versatile all-terrain mower in the USA, and we visualize that success. We're showing this awesome video of somebody controlling this lawnmower going through these crazy hills, okay? And then we reinforce that with our call to action of request a demo. Okay, so we're following these key principles. It also works with e-commerce. So this is big blue dive lights. They make these insane underwater flashlights for scuba divers. Um, so what we have in the very top right, we have our shopping cart, you know, like to, you know, to shop now. And then our heading is we say seeing is believing, and we visualize that success with showing somebody scuba diving with these amazing flashlights. Like I want to see myself there dive in the Great Barrier Reef with these crazy cool flashlights. And then our call to action, which is the shop now. Okay. So it's a framework. It does not mean every site has to follow the same recipe. Okay, so this is Goodwill Central Florida. And what we have is a different pattern where we're really focusing our energy on donations, right? So the donations that matter is our focal point, and we're visualizing that by showing someone else that's benefited through these donations that have bettered their life, they've found a job based on your ability to donate, okay? So as I mentioned with the iFlow, we typically use the Z pattern when we design, meaning Again, our top life, our top left is our axis of orientation, and then we natively go across the top bar. And then our eye instantly goes diagonally across to the next focal point, which in this case is that photo, and then again, forming the bottom bar of the Z, which is a, it's a prime place for a call to action. Right? Embracing the way we naturally scan to work with me. Right? That's, these are ways that we reduce friction through this process. <clears throat> Last example is very strange. And now you can start seeing the Z pattern, right? Like now that, now that you kind of unlock that. Um, but so very strange what they do is it's check-in software for when you go to check into like a big building or facility, right? They scan your ID, make sure you're, you know, legit. Um, so at the top right, we have our call to action, which requests a demo. We have our heading, which is modern lobby check-in software. We have a visualization where we actually show this like whole check-in process through this illustration and our, and our call to action. We also talk about our benefits, right? So we say it's faster check-in, it's a secure process, talk about the encryption, and then we reinforce the social proof with other enterprises that are using this product, okay? And it helps really build the clout and the esteem of what this brand represents. And this is a framework, so we are constantly studying and adapting these things, right, through experimentation, you know? So we might try variations where we try the blue button versus the orange button. Um, illustrations versus photography, different headlines, different logos that we position, because we want to know what's going to build the most trust that we possibly can to help our, inspire our audience to convert. Mm. So now you understand the key elements of that wireframe. We walked through some key examples and those principles. So now I'm going to show you how to actually structure your site into a conversion funnel. Okay, so when I'm talking about a funnel, I'm talking about everything, the process of where an anonymous visitor goes all the way through your, your, your journey to become a customer. So a visitor is anyone that's on our website. We know nothing about them, right? There's this just mystery pool of people. And then the lead is the step in which they give us contact information. It could be an email address. It doesn't mean they're qualified, it's just a contact, right? MQL, that's a marketing qualified lead. So we know that this contact or this person has a problem that we're actually equipped to help solve. Right? Now we can actually start personalizing some of the communication in our marketing. And then our SQL, sales qualified lead. This is what we're all about, right? Is making sure that we can actually find someone that's a good fit for our business. So the items in green, that's marketing's job. Items in orange, that's sales job. So the SQL is the handoff point, right? Where marketing is actually handing off and teeing up sales. And then we have our quotes, right? The bids or proposals that sales needs to create. And then, of course, the customer. So there's conversion rates through each of these different stages of this funnel. So one of the first things that you could do is actually just plug in your numbers, your visitors, your leads, your SQLs. And actually what that'll do, it'll illuminate the gaps and the opportunities that you have on where you need to actually focus your marketing and your energy. Okay? So that's the funnel. So we take that funnel and we tilt it to its head on its side. This is essentially what that journey would look like, right? For somebody becoming a visitor to a lead, that's a top of funnel experience, right? So that's usually something to capture an email address. Low commitment, low barrier, 
when we capture an email, so I can put them through kind of a broad-based nurturing sequence. MQL, that's the middle of funnel, right? I know they have a problem I can solve, but let me start helping to segment them and learn more about this and diagnose their problem. And that's where we can use lead magnets to help them do that. And then finally, our sales qualify, that's our bottom of funnel activity. That's like the, the money maker form that we're trying to get them to fill out, which is typically where the primary call to action is for our website. So this is essentially the, the lead funnel that we use within our conversion journey. And there's a lot of different tools and lead magnets that you can use depending on where you are looking to attack, right? So from the top of funnel, that could be everything from like a checklist, it could be a quiz, it could be a workbook, low commitment, high value, and I'm willing to exchange my email, okay? The lead to MQL though, that's where we can start really creating an interactive experience, cost calculators, we could create webinars, ways that we can actually help get them into the right section in the funnel uh, and communicate the right message for them. And then sales qualified leads, that's your request for proposals, your live demos, your free trials, things like that. Now, as you start building up this arsenal of lead magnets and resources, you're so tempted to just like put them all on a page. But the key is you have to think about one conversion target per page, right? I want to keep it simple and I want to be very intentional of what I'm asking this visitor to do. Because we've all been on these websites where it starts promoting us some sort of offer, and next thing you know, I'm inundated with options and next steps. Is this building trust? No, is this building trust? No. So instead of us pulling us in, it's pushing us away. So don't overdo it. We're gonna be very intentional on what we use and when. And also with our funnel, we're gonna be thinking about popular pages and variations of pages. Not all page, web page is the same. There's different types. There's web pages, there's sales pages, there's long form landing pages, there's squeeze pages, there's order bumps, there's a variety of different variants. I can't get into every single one of them, but no, there's different recipes and resources that you can use when structuring that funnel. Now, I know I've just unpacked a ton in the last 28 minutes, um, so I want to take a step back and actually take a breath and recap everything that we've learned today. First, the importance of building trust with our users. Right? Trust is the ability for us to connect with them so they are willing to take a step and convert with us. Then we talked about the six point wireframe regions, right? all of the regions that make up that wireframe, and then we showed an example, the anatomy of that, with that rock climbing gym example. We went through some top website samples of showing what that looks like in the wild. Um, we talked about the conversion funnel structure, and finally popular lead magnets and opt-ins that you can use. Now, I hope that everybody got at least a little bit of nugget of value out of today and something they can walk out of here with and apply. But the truth is, 95% of you are gonna get up and you're gonna walk out of this room and you're not gonna do anything about it. That's not to be rude. It's just the law of conference statistics, right? It just happens. So for the 5% of you though, that this really truly resonated, that it connected with you and you said, hey, yeah, Johnny, you woke me up. Like, I, I know I've been slacking on this. I have something for you. I'd like to invite you to take what we call the website challenge, okay? The website gauntlet challenge. And how it works is this. One is that I want you to build your wireframe. I want you to actually put some time and energy and thought into actually trying to fill out your own wireframe. And then I want you to send it to me, okay? And what I'll do, I'm gonna review this with our strategist I'm gonna review your current website, and I'm gonna re review that wireframe, I'm gonna redline it, I'm gonna put a lot of ideas and recommendations, and I'm gonna share that with you, okay? Because why? Because I love this stuff, I'm passionate about it, I'm here to help as many people level up their business as possible, and if you're gonna invest that time, so will I, okay? And so for the 5% of you that are willing to take that step, this tool is for you. This is a free wireframe template, okay? It's an organizer on how to actually structure and organize your website, and there's some great examples in here on how to do it. So this resource is here, you can grab that QR code. Um, you can also build, visit Zilla's, so it's zill.as slash summit. Um, but the truth is, guys, we all know that we came in here with average, believing that average was okay. But I know you're ready. I know you're ready to elevate, to go from average to apex. Really, and put your business in beast mode, and become the most ferocious marketers we can be. My name is Johnny Hughes. You can connect with me on LinkedIn or on Instagram at Johnny Mozilla. Thank you all. It was an absolute honor to be here.